Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Serge. And I'm Cern. And now we're going to be talking about Plural Space and Lung Ultrasound Plus. One of the coolest things, I love the Plural Space and Lung. It has to be my favorite thing to scan just because there are so few things in the thorax that we can look for. But to be able to scan the Plural Space and Lung, we're going to show you a quick overview in DAISY here on how quickly we can scan the lungs. But before we do that, it's really important to know your borders. Your sonographically defined borders because looking at uh, DAISY here, I can't tell where her uh, lung ends and her abdomen starts. She's uh, well conditioned, Daisy. So we can't really always tell where we're going to scan on to the lumbar muscles. And so therefore, we're going to quickly go over the borders that we scan. And then we'll actually show you how we find those and how we quickly do an overview before we break it down and go specifically into each of the pathologies we look for with our plus scanning. That's right. And we're going to show you where we start with the probe as well. Again, using those borders and all the pathologies we're going to be looking for, we're going to go border to border to border to border. No memorizing ribs, no counting ribs, no memorizing any protocols, just using clinical knowledge. And therefore that first border we're going to talk about is right behind this front limb. So if I can palpate the front limb and then I can feel a rib space behind that front limb, that is essentially going to be our cranial border. And if we lift the limb forward or pull the limb out a little and tuck the probe into the axilla, we can expand that cranial border. But essentially that cranial border is as far forward as we can scan with our probe before we hit the scapula and the flexor muscles of the shoulder. So that's our cranial border. That's right. Then we have our dorsal border. Again, we're going to be finding these using ultrasound. Dorsal border, that's going to be the end of the pleural space and lung. We're going to get into the hepaxial muscles. So we're going to know that pretty quickly. Yeah, and if we place our probe out that cranial border and slide straight caudal, some point we're going to slide off lung and we're going to hit the abdomen. That's very, very difficult to predict and it can vary depending on mm -hmm. pathology, breed, species. So we really like to use our border, start over lung behind the front limb and slide caudal until you see the vertical edge artifact, which is the curtain sign transitioning from the lung onto soft tissues of the abdomen. That's right. And then ventrally, we actually have two borders. We have the ventral lung border and the ventral pleural border. Ventral pleural border is going to be along that, the sternal muscles down there and the sternum. And then we have the cardiac notch, which is very important because that's going to be your ventral lung border. So you got to think about those. All right. So we'll just do a quick overview then. We'll show you how quickly we can scan the, uh, the pleural space and lungs in our volunteer here, Daisy. So again, when do we start? We want to put the marker of the probe towards the head. And we probably want to set our depth usually to set around four or six centimeters to start with. And we will use some of the voice command features when we uh, demonstrate this just to show you how we can change the gain and the depth uh, if it's not perfect without having to uh, leave the cat or to reach over and make those adjustments. So we're going to go ahead and start again in that uh, cranial border. So this is uh, how Daisy appears to be most comfortable. So I'm just going to palpate that front limb. I'm going to separate the fur there so I can see the skin and I put a little bit of alcohol and I'm about halfway up the, the chest which is a good place to start. Put the marker towards the head. At that cranial border so that you're sure you're over lung. And then we're just gonna unfreeze our image here. And there you go. We can see we've got uh, the soft tissues of the thoracic wall. We've got the ribs and rib shadows. And then we see this white area here, this bright white line. You got bat signs. That's bat signs and that's our pleural line. And we're gonna look for a shimmer there. So that's one of the things we're gonna look for. We look for that lung sliding. And when we do this again, if we wanted to, we can actually make a quick adjustment here and say, decrease depth, decrease depth. That you can see is making our image uh, larger. So I can see that pleural line more clearly and look for lung sliding. Increase gain, decrease gain. So you can see how we can use our voice control and then we can actually increase depth. So now we're back to five centimeters. Our gain looks good. And we can see we got obvious lung sliding. So now we're going to move to our caudal border. We're just going to slide back until we see that curtain sign like you see here. And then we're going to follow that dorsally until that pleural line disappears. And it goes into the sublumbar muscles. That's our dorsal border and our caudal border. We come back down to we just see that pleural line again like you see there here. It is. And that's our most caudal dorsal site with confidence because you can still see the caudal border and the dorsal border. Go that's any right. higher, sublumbar muscles. Going more caudal, you're in the abdomen. That is with confidence our most caudal dorsal mm -hmm. site to look for air, free air and pneumothorax. That's right. Now we start scanning in a big S-shaped pattern, essentially trying to cover as much lung as possible, looking for alveolar interstitial disease. So an increased number of beelines or lung consolidations. And I've gone as far cranial as I can in that dorsal third. I don't see any pathology. I'm going to drop down to mid-thorax. And again, then I don't see any pathology as I come down to mid-thorax. And then I'm going to come back until I find that curtain sign again, that caudal border, looking for pathology as I go. And there you go. You see that vertical edge artifact again coming in uh, right at the edge of our screen. Uh, increased depth. Increased gain. 
That just makes that uh, cottle board a little easier to see. Mm -hmm. uh, and at this point, I've used one shot of alcohol so far. We'll put another little shot of alcohol here uh, and improve that uh, image of that curtain sign. So again, we'll come back. Yep. And there's our curtain sign you see coming in off the right. Once you see that, and we're in the mid-thorax, we're now going to drop down, follow that curtain sign, and we're going to follow it until we put the heart and diaphragm in the same window like you see here. That's right. Increase gain. Increase gain. And there you go, you can see the heart to the left, you can see the diaphragm to the right, and you see that little uh, mediastinal triangle between them. And this is a great spot to differentiate pericardial or pleural effusion mm -hmm. in our feline patients, and we'll definitely pick that up. If this patient is clinical for pericardial pleural effusion, we'll definitely pick it up at this site. If, however, we're worried about missing a small or scant amount of fluid, the research does show that turning your probe parallel to the ribs and dropping down to the ventral sternal muscles will increase your chances of finding very, very small amounts of fluid that aren't gonna be therapeutic, they're not going to be causing respiratory stress, but they might be diagnostic That's right. and give us an answer to why our patient's not doing correct. So we're just going to rotate our probe parallel. And if you're over a liver, like you see here, then you know you jump one rib cranial, and that should put us again at the heart, like you see here, with the probe parallel and marker directed dorsally. That's right. So now you're actually at the ventral pleural border, and we want to slide the probe up between the ribs to catch the ventral lung border, so you don't miss any pathology in that cardiac notch. All right, so I'm not seeing any B lines of consolidation along that pleural line with a probe parallel. I'll jump a rib cranial, no pathology, come back down, no pleural effusion. And then I'll jump one more rib cranial to that uh, heart, and we're off the heart, and you can see the lung here, curling down nicely to the uh, sternal muscles, no pleural effusion, no B lines, no consolidation, and we can scan back up onto the lungs in a higher region looking for pathology. So that was a quick overview. We can usually do it in about 60 seconds. We can scan for pneumothorax, we can scan the lung surface for B lines of consolidations, find that pericardial diaphragmatic window to differentiate pleural from pericardial fusion, turn the probe parallel and scan the ventral pleural and lung borders by alternating in those intercostal spaces that the sites we're looking at. And then don't forget the subxiphoid, as we showed you earlier in the abdominal station, does allow us a really nice window to assess the heart when it's contact with the diaphragm in our feline patients, as well as that caudal lung region and that pleural space. So don't forget that subxiphoid as part of your plus scanning. That's right. So now we're going to go through each, each question individually. There's actually four pathologies that we look for when we do pleural space and ultrasound. That's it. Four pathologies. That's it. We're going to come back to them in detail after this. And until then, merci beaucoup. Until next time. Au revoir.